the, as I mentioned, there was this sort of quiet time in the, in the office. They were just waiting for the president to arrive at the trade mart when this Chinese fire drill of activity would begin again and everybody would be on phones and taking dictation and everything like that. And, um, but at this point, they were all sort of scattered around the office and the phone rang. I was standing next to the news desk and um, such was, um, was my relegation in covering this that I didn't even pick it up. I sort of looked around and thought that somebody else would answer the phone. It rang a second time. Nobody was moving to answer the phone, so just at the third ring, I picked it up and answered and said, uh, UPI. And the voice on, I recognized the voice on the other end. It was Smitty, because I had taken dictation from him. And the voice on the other end was screaming. Three shots were fired at the motorcade. I nearly dropped the phone. Uh, I grabbed it just before it fell out. I sort of screwed it to my ear. What I said next, did not exactly um, recommend me for a career, a future career in journalism. Um, I said, I can't hear you. <laughs> it was a knee-jerk reaction to buy time. At the same time, I was grabbing a piece of paper and rolling it into a typewriter. I had heard him perfectly. I'm surprised that people out in the street hadn't heard him. He repeated again, three shots were fired at the motorcade. Make it a bulletin precede. So I rolled in, I typed the words bulletin precede Dallas UPI and I, three shots and I th suddenly was beginning to realize as I was typing exactly what he was saying just verbatim, I can't, I can't do this, I need help. And my, um, Jack Fallon was standing about three or four feet away talking on a, writing on a telex machine. Um, I won't stop to explain what a telex machine is. They're probably, it's, it's sort of like texting today except it had to be a landline and you dial somebody and you could type back and forth. There was a keyboard on a teletype machine. And he was talking to Austin about the plans for the president's arrival that evening. And I reached over and I, I, almost, I was almost afraid to say it again myself. I said, Jack, Smitty, he says three shots were fired at the motorcade. Jack said, what? Give me that. And he grabbed the phone out of my hand. And I said, I wrote this. This is what he's, and he was in two steps around to a typewriter holding the phone saying, Smitty, what is it? And Smitty, who thought I still wasn't able to hear him, <laughs> um, shouted the same thing to Jack. He said, yeah, Smitty, we've got the bulletin. We've got the bulletin. It's moving. He had given the paper to the teletype operator who was punching it into tape. Um, I, I won't pause to explain all these the tapes and things. It's, it's, we'll talk a little later about the difference in journalism. But, um, and I felt absolutely crestfallen. I thought I had probably fumbled this story like a quarterback on the goal line. I just hadn't, I didn't, felt terrible. Everybody else in the office had heard. They were grabbing phones. They were call, calling uh, anybody they could think of, radio stations, anybody that might have stringers, anybody who might have somebody to find out any information. All we had was Smitty screaming three shots were fired at the motorcade. Smitty was telling Jack on the phone, I didn't know this, that um, apparently no one was injured. And the second sentence of the story was that apparently no one was hurt. Um, the reason Smitty was saying this is because the motorcade was speeding up and going along the motorcade route, the same the route that um, uh, had been published. And suddenly I had, you never know where these inspirations come from, and suddenly I, it just hit me. I knew the one person in the city of Dallas who would know what was going on. And I grabbed a phone and I dialed the police headquarters. And I tried to muster all the authority I did not feel in my voice. And I said, this is Bill Hampton, UPI. Give me dispatch. <laughs> Somebody picked up the phone immediately and said, dispatch. And I said, what could this, I repeated, this Bill Hampton, UPI. What can you tell me about the shots at the president's motorcade? He said, well, the president has been hit. Um, there is blood in the back of the car. I just got off the phone with a motorcycle escort that was beside the president, and they're on their way to Parkland Hospital. 